In this lesson, we'll learn how to customize our sketchbook designer canvas as well as navigate around it. All right, so picking up exactly where we left off in the previous lesson, again, just working with an empty document right now. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is how we can begin to customize our sketchbook designer canvas. You'll notice when you create a new file or you open the, the application and a new file is created, we have no control over how big the canvas is, the resolution of the canvas, things of that nature. So I want to show you where you can find those settings. And if we come over here in our layer manager and simply select our canvas layer. Um, let's come over and click on this little arrow to the left hand side of it. When I do that, you'll notice that the layer attributes window pops out. And um, you can see here that uh, it's labeled paper at the top. Now, the first setting you see here is just kind of this white bar, but we can actually come in and access um, the color widget here that we actually choose our hue as well as our luminance and our saturation in. So if we wanted a solid color fill for our canvas, then we can get to that right here. Now the next setting you see is a, an opacity setting, and you can kind of see if I adjust that, we're actually adjusting the opacity of the canvas. Now, inside of Sketchbook Designer, artwork isn't created on the canvas. Artwork is created on layers above the canvas. So the canvas is simply a backdrop, so to speak, for the artwork. Now, uh, if we wanted to, we could come in here and choose a number of different types of paper texture for our canvas right here from the canvas layer attributes. You can see here there's a, ver a variety of different types of paper textures there. So uh, let's switch that back to solid color jump down here and you can see the next little drop down we have will give us a number of different presets for paper sizes. You'll notice some of them probably from your uh, specific locale. Uh, we've got things like Ledger or Tabloid, Executive. Down here we have things like A1, A2, A3, things of that nature. So various size presets. Uh, right below that is a, a simple portrait or landscape size preset. Then we have the unit of measure for our document. And right now we're set to pixels. So we could come in here and set this to inches um, in, in, in any number of different units of measure here. So um, now below that we can actually adjust the size of the canvas. And you can see my canvas size right now I'm working with is 1600 pixels by 1200 pixels. So we can adjust that uh, by simply manually entering our values or adjusting these sliders to the left. Below that we have our resolution unit. You can see here, um, right now I'm working with pixels per inch. We can switch that to pixels per centimeter if we so chose. But right now my resolution for this file is set to 52 pixels per inch. So um, if you want to increase that, maybe you're creating a document for print or you're creating a document for the web, you may want a higher resolution. So um, you'll want to go ahead and bump that up here. So um, down below that we have some things, uh, some settings for model physical size. You can see again we have a unit of measure. Uh, we have model width and model height. This really has to do with if you're moving curves back and forth between an application like AutoCAD, um, your unit of measure, is, you want that to be consistent between the two applications. Now lastly down here at the bottom of this dialog we have our proportion area. Um, you can see here we have the option to keep proportions of our document. If we come in and maybe choose to resize the document, we could actually tick that little box right there. And if we were to come up say and begin to adjust the width, you'll see that the height is automatically adjusted there. So let me come in and put in 1600 again. And down here we have sort of our pivot. So this is kind of the center point in our canvas. If we wanted to shrink our canvas down, would it do it and retain the information in the center? Would we want to do it from the top left hand corner? And so on and so forth. So uh, again, these are your canvas attributes. And you can get to those simply by clicking on the little arrow that is to the left of the layer manager here. Now let's talk for a moment, I'm going to come in and select my paint one layer here. Let's talk for a moment about navigating our canvas because as we're creating artwork here inside of Sketchbook Designer, this is something that we're definitely going to need to really gain a solid grasp over. So um, we mentioned in the last lesson we have our navigation bar down here and this navigation bar can actually be customized. You can see there's a little button in the bottom right hand corner of that bar and if we click and hold on that you can see here we have all of these options available to us. And we even have some docking position locate or docking position options here. So 
I'm actually going to release that because we have all of the options selected here. Now, this navigation bar is great, and if you prefer to use this, by all means, go ahead and do that. Now, I prefer to actually hit the space bar um, and be. I do that because it brings up our navigation wheel. You can see here if I click on this button here, we get this little wheel right here. And now that's persistent. Everywhere I move my cursor, it's always there because I clicked on it in the navigation bar. Uh, now this navigation wheel, let me just close it out by hitting that X. We can also get to this by simply tapping and holding the space bar on our keyboard. You can see that we get this same exact navigation wheel. Now if I release the space bar, that navigation wheel goes away. But again, bringing that back, we have several different options that are available to us here. And these are the navigation options that I utilize most when I'm creating artwork here in Sketchbook Designer. So this outer ring is going to allow us to pan the canvas. So um, you can see here we can simply click and drag and we can find the corner. Now one thing that's cool about panning is you don't have to have your mouse inside this bar or inside this ring when you click. You can have it out side of that. So a lot of times I'll just pan around really quickly here, just like so. And I'm not really paying attention to the navigation wheel at all. I'm just making sure that I'm not clicking in the center of that wheel. Now occasionally I'll accidentally click um, if I'm working really, really quickly. Uh, but we have, in the very center, we have a little magnifying glass which allows us to zoom in and out on the canvas. So you can see there we're zooming out and we can zoom in. And I'm just clicking and dragging to the left to zoom out and to the right to zoom in. Now this little button below that is going to allow us to rotate our canvas. So if we begin to click on that here, you can see here we can rotate around. Um, and I do this a lot because I utilize a pressure sensitive tablet, um, a Wacom Cintiq to be specific, and uh, sometimes it's easier to rotate the canvas to get um, a specific drawing angle for a curve that I'm trying to draw. So um, let's go ahead and just kind of rotate that back around. Now as far as the navigation bar goes down here, Let's talk about some of the options that are available there that we don't have access to in the navigation wheel. And namely, it is this option here to view the canvas in actual size, and this option here to fit it to our current view, or rather fit it to view. So um, if we were to look at the canvas actual size, I'm actually just going to hit Control-1 on my keyboard. And you'll notice that my canvas fills the user interface here. So um, now if we wanted to fit that, uh, or look at that, in a fitted view here, uh, again fitting to view, we could click on this button right here. Um, but let me go ahead and go back to actual size. We can also hit control one on the keyboard, or rather control zero to fit the canvas in view. So uh, control one will fill your view or look at the document actual size. Control zero will fit it into view. And you can see here that uh, when we're fit into view, we can see the entire canvas all the way up to the top edge and the bottom edge. Uh, when we are looking at an actual size, we're not able to necessarily see the entire canvas. So uh, a lot of times I will work in that fitted view just so I have a, a good bearing on where the borders of my canvas are. All right, great. Now, these last two options over here are for flipping vertical and flipping horizontal. And I'm going to show, uh, just grab my pencil tool, and I'm simply going to draw an arrow here pointing up in the center of my canvas. So uh, we know which way that arrow is. Now, if I were to come in and flip vertical, obviously that's going to flip my canvas upside down. Now, this isn't a permanent change. If we come back over here and click this Fit to View, and actual so let's click on actual size. And you'll notice here that the arrow switches back to the state that I drew it in. So really all we're doing is rotating the canvas to where it's upside down. Now again, if we were to let me just undo back a couple times, I'll hit control Z twice. Let's just draw another arrow here. I'll draw this one pointing to the right. Again, we could flip our canvas uh, horizontally here and again we're just looking at it from that different view again if I come in and look at it in actual size we haven't made a permanent change to our canvas by simply clicking on these flip vertical and flip horizontal options here all right, great. But, you know, like I said, I very rarely use those options. Most of the options I use for navigating my canvas are right here inside the navigation wheel. And again, you can access this by tapping the space bar and holding it on your keyboard.
All right, great. So in this lesson, we learned how we can begin to customize our canvas here inside of Sketchbook Designer, as well as navigate around it. So uh, now that we're familiar with this, let's go ahead and move on to our next lesson. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to move forward and begin to learn about the layer manager. And we're going to look at that in quite a bit more detail. So uh, see you in the next lesson.